did see my shadow this morning, Rob. And here you are. Here I am. That's right. Don't give out too much more because that's part of your intro, by the way, later on in a half of an hour. About half of it right there. Also, New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap. Mr. Gilstrap. Good morning. Happy Friday. Before Rob, before, before we get started, could I give a shout out to uh, to one of our uh, court security officers, uh, Ernie Reed, uh, who died very unexpectedly last Wednesday. Uh, great guy, highly respected, going to be real, a real loss to the judicial system, the county county courts, uh, county government. So. Well, prayers and condolences to the family. Yeah. Uh, also, our first guest in this segment is General Mookie Walker candidate for Congress, joins us by telephone. Good morning, General. How are you, sir? Uh, good morning, distinguished gentlemen. I'm I'm doing well. I'm fighting off a little sinus infection, but uh, I think I'm going to beat it. I have uh, similar stories, and I uh, hope yours goes away faster than the, all You've of the different things. You've had weeks. Yeah. Months. I'm going on <laughs> months. months. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, general. I'm going after, on ten days. Uh, ten days. <laughs> yeah. For the last yeah. thirty minutes, we tend to sit around and talk among the three of us before we go on the show. Use the term "distinguished" fairly loosely. You need to qualify who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, uh, 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 all of you are distinguished. Okay, so uh, Rob is 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 a lead personality around the panhandle. Uh, uh, you, Admiral, I got to say, you know, the, your, your career says it all. And, and uh, of course, our, our distinguished author, uh, if anybody ever read some of his books, then they'd know he's distinguished as well. Oh, that's well, a... my, my mother called me special. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and many members of the communities do now, too. Oh, and she probably said, bless your heart. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> In general, let me just clarify. Cut me a switch. <laughs> when Bill says that we, were, we all sit around and talk, let me just make it clear. Bill sits around and gives orders, and Gilstrap and I respond for a half an hour. Yeah, yeah. Then the show begins. Then the show. Yeah. That's just how it flows yeah. around here. You were flowing with all those compliments. I assume you may consider running for office, are you, General? I, I certainly am. Yes. Um, I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I want to tap into your military background here, General, because uh, obviously with the Middle East, uh, it seems that uh, as each week goes by with this situation, another issue unfolds, and it's another issue oh, that God. seems to put the world in more and more danger. And now we have uh, the situation with the three uh, deceased service personnel out of Georgia from the drone attack. Yeah. And now we have uh, the Biden administration threatening layers of retaliation and Iran releasing a statement that says we will not be bullied. We will also respond in kind. Uh, where, where are we? Uh, if, if the brink of war on, on the needle is 10, where is this needle right now? Well, so with my opinion on what I know Iran's capabilities are and what we've done successfully in the past, I'd say it's actually at about five. Mm. Iran is a blowhard, okay? Uh, but, but what Americans need to know about Iran is that Iran's killed hundreds of American citizens already, and they're pursuing a nuclear weapon, okay? Uh, right now, Iran is, plan is plotting to assassinate senior U.S. government officials, including uh, President Trump, former Secretary Pompeo, John Bolton, and even some of the top generals that we have here on U.S. soil. They put bounties on them right here, right? Matter of fact, you, you all may remember Iran even tried to kidnap an American citizen from her home in Brooklyn. So, look, if we don't stop around, these terrorists, ter terrorists are going to come to our doorstep and attack us right here. But that being said, back in, uh, so back in 2020, at the height of uh, the Trump administration's maximum pressure campaign, we had Iran's uh, foreign funds, their accessible reserves, down to $4 billion. So uh, in 2023, uh, can anybody guess what their foreign reserves are up to now th that they have accessible and we unfroze their funds more do we not 12, more, more than 12 times that amount 40 over 49 billion dollars due to to the, the biden administration softening these these sanctions and 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 these oils the oil sales that they do under under trump they they were only able to export about uh, six six and a half billion dollars. All right, uh, but but in 2022 they exported about 30 billion dollars of oil. Okay, and so these funds go to kill Iranian protesters, fund terror groups, strengthen Iran's military, and 
fund terrorism that is used to kill Americans. So that being said, we have to tighten up these sanctions, first of all. But then let's go to the military side. Right now, I know down at, at, at CENTCOM headquarters and over at the Combined Air Operations Center there in, in Qatar, uh, they are they are plotting all of the different targets that they're going to hit, and, uh, is, uh, and I know that's happening. Uh, they're going to uh, eventually CENTCOM commander is going to bring that uh, to uh, the administration and, and ask for the green light. And uh, what we should do is hit their supply lines, cut off their ability to, to sell and ship oil. Uh, and and if, if I had my druthers, we'd send a few tomahawks into the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps headquarters. But we got to when we when we schwacked. That's that's one of the terms we use in the Air Force. When we schwacked uh, some of their their top leaders, Iran had a lot of bluster, but uh, they couldn't do anything. Yep. Or, or John. Yeah. Uh, General, uh, it appears to me that uh, that we've gone in another dimension of how we wage war. Uh, every every generation or so, a new weapon comes in. I think the use of drones have changed the way that we look and view at war. For one thing, the oh. drones come in unidentified. It's hard to, in some cases, identify who actually launched them. Uh, the other thing is no boots on the ground. Uh, so it's a totally different dimension of how to wage war, and I'm not sure we've actually figured out how to use them to the maximum. Your thoughts? Okay, so with that being said, uh, uh, some of the stories that I've read uh, saying that there was a, an American drone coming back at the same time, and that's why they missed yes. this one, I don't really buy that because our our drones have identified friendly foe, IFF, and, uh, if, they're not, and if any aircraft is coming uh, toward our bases without squawking the right code, uh, it will get engaged. But that is so I'd really like to find out what the true story on that is. But here's the other thing. Uh, right now, they know that the, the drones are working uh, for them, for the Houthis. And matter of fact, uh, uh, the, even the Ukrainians are using drones against uh, Russia. They're effective. And so what we have to do is cut it off at the source. And I... I suspect we know where they're being manufactured and so and what parts they're using to manufacture them with. And so we have to destroy those supply lines and, and that will alleviate some of this pain. General, this is John Gilstrap. Uh, when I read these stories about American service people being killed in, in the various theaters, I'm wondering how unrealistic is it to make the price of killing an American soldier so onerous, so grotesque, so monstrous that nobody would dream of doing such a thing. You know, it just seems to me it's it's the they they bring a knife, we bring a gun. You know, they bring a bomb, we bring a nuke. The why are we neutered as a country that the the people feel empowered to do this sort of thing against I mean, we call ourselves the most pay, uh, powerful nation on earth but we keep getting our face slapped and it, to me as one who's not in the military never have been it just seems to me that we're just taking it okay so uh, uh i probably shouldn't say this but but these are the same conversations over lunch that uh we general officers have in the Pentagon. I'm going, what in the hell? <clears throat> Sorry about that. What in the heck? But but nevertheless, uh, we, we uh, so under the former administration, Iran wasn't doing this. And they had these capabilities then. But they knew that uh, well, we would uh, respond harshly. Right now, with, with the, the current administration, we're, we're giving them all sorts of money. We're trying to appease them, and and they're laughing at us, and they're rubbing their hands together, kind of like Mr. Smithers uh, and uh, or, or, or uh, Mr. Burns from from uh, The Simpsons, and and they're attacking us, and and we're not doing anything about it. And that's going to keep happening until we actually do a serious strike. 
But, General, there's a, a counter-argument to that, uh, the counter-argument being it's better to have a, uh, a friend or a colleague as opposed to having an enemy. This is an age-old problem, not just now, but it's uh, been going oh. on for a long time. Uh, where do you draw the line? Uh, it's awfully easy to say we're going to retaliate in, uh, in mass, but then we, in our society, our world today, that very well may invoke a much broader war that nobody wants. It's a, it's a delicate, it's a highly delicate uh, act, and I'm not sure in real time we can sort out which is the best approach. In hindsight, it's awfully easy, but in real time, it's very delicate. So another thing Americans should know is that uh, Iran, their their only allies really are Russia, uh, China, and uh, and the Houthis in Yemen. Not even the official y- y- Yemeni government. Okay, uh, uh, the most of uh, most countries uh, on the other side of the Gulf, so uh, kind of Qatar. Uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, the, 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 uh, any, any of the countries in the GCC, they're not fond of Iran. And so it's pretty easy for us to uh, build up that alliance and isolate Iran and, have the, and starve them out in the hope that there's a re- regime change so that they can actually come into the fold of, of sane thinking nations. But wasn't that what was done with the sanctions uh, that Obama uh, imposed a few years or so ago? Well, the, the sanctions that, that Obama imposed, um, I, I didn't think worked well because uh, 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 even back in 2018, uh, I, I'm pretty sure Iran had over $120 billion of, of uh, free access to their reserve funds. Uh, and so it was only under the Trump administration that they tightened down all the way down to $4 billion from $120 something billion. Uh, but here's another thing. Even Pakistan doesn't like Iran. They're, they're having border skirmishes as well. So quite honestly, I think it's easy for us to, to uh, tighten the news, so to speak, on Iran. Yeah, uh, again, let me uh, follow up on that. When you say tighten the noose, are you talking about economic, economic tightening or military tightening or a combination thereof? All of the above. Okay, so, you know, uh, our instruments of national power are diplomacy, information, military, and economics. We call that the dime. Uh, uh, and so we can use all of those. And it has been used successfully during the Trump administration. Uh, I don't know why. I, 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 can't, I can't even imagine why what, were, what was going on in the minds of the current administration to, to give Iran so much rope to hang us with. Our guest is General Mookie Walker, Brigadier General, and a candidate for Congress as well. The January the 3rd ISIS attack on Iran was preceded by the, a warning from the Biden administration to the Islamic State that there, uh, or to uh, the Iranian uh, leadership that uh, this was going to potentially take place. If you could... Uh, tell me, is that standard operating procedure, and what was the Biden administration hoping to gain by issuing this warning? Uh, th- that is non-standard. Usually, uh, those of us at, at the top strategic levels say, "Hey, uh, if somebody's going to uh, weaken our enemy, so be it." Uh, but I think what the Biden administration was trying to do was, is curry favor because they. they because they're, they were in pursuit of this Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, the J- JCPOA, and, and, and they were trying to just curry favor with Iran. And that's never going to happen. Iran absolutely hates us. They say it regularly, out loud, in print, in everything they do. Uh, so I don't know what, what this administration thinks it's going to do to get Iran to love us. It's not going to happen. Well, it certainly hasn't happened yet. It's a bit what the hostages were taken in 1979. I think there's there's a point where you wake up and say, "Hey, that guy who's saying I hate you, I'm your enemy," is probably doesn't like you, and he's and he's your enemy. Um, <laughs> that, 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 that guy who keeps trying to shoot you and stab you, uh, I don't think he likes me. That's right. It, you know, it's and it might not just be me, <laughs> it, but uh, General, I'd like to to shift course a little bit and let's talk about what's going on on the um, southern border. And there seems to be a kind of uh, 
a a a silent war, civil war that's developing Ooh. between the the governors, uh, certainly of of Texas and and to a lesser extent uh, Florida. Twenty five governors in all are supporting this move, yeah. right? But I th- I'm only aware of Texas that puts up the barbed wire, and I could be wrong on that. But well, they're supporting Texas, but they're supporting wrong. Texas. And here, the the Supreme Court has said they can't do that, and the Biden administration is has telegraphed that well, they're not going to do anything well, about it either. What are your thoughts on this? Okay, so 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 uh, let me uh, let our audience know more accurately. The Supreme Court did not say that they cannot do that. The Supreme Court said that the Biden administration can send people to cut that that razor wire and barbed wire, but they did not say that uh, Texas cannot do that. And so a lot, a lot of the media out there are are spreading this as a major win for the administration, and it's really not. And matter of fact, uh, the, the Texas National Guard put up a flag uh, uh, with a cannon on it saying, come and take it. And, and, and quite honestly, the, the administration is in a pickle because even the Border Patrol is on their side. And so, so I don't think that they're going to be able to coerce uh, the Border Patrol to, to bump chests with, with Texas. Se- uh, secondly... Everyone hopefully heard uh, director of the FBI Ray's testimony of, about the danger happening at the border. Okay, so so some of you may know, uh, I think in fiscal year 2023, 24,000 approximately illegal aliens from China came over the border. And, and so far in FY 2024, uh, up to this date, it's over 9,000. So you can't tell me that there are that many uh, Chinese Christians who are trying to uh, uh, escape China to come in here. So they're coming in here for a purpose, okay? And and there are literally tens of thousands of Iranian and Yemeni and other Middle Eastern folks coming through the border as well. And so all that thing, all that stuff I told you earlier about Iran plotting assassinations here in the United States, it's it's being facilitated by this administration. General, can I sh- let me shift gears to the uh, to your upcoming campaign? You're running against Riley Moore, and I've always viewed Riley as being uh, quite conservative. Uh, but yet, I listen to you and the other candidates, and everybody leaves the impression that Riley is is qu- very liberal, and they're running on mu- a much more conservative, far right uh, 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 platform than what Raleigh is. Uh, and I think when we talked last, you left me the impression that you would also be running to the right of, of Raleigh's uh, uh, platform. Uh, why do you think that, Riley, why do you conceive or believe that Raleigh is, is uh, less less pure Republican than what, what he uh, you think he should be? Well, so uh, I think Raleigh's a nice guy. But I'll say this, uh, he, he, he tried to downplay his time at uh, the, the Podesta group, where he was lobbying for Hong Kong, Azerbaijan, Somalia, and Iraq. And, he, uh, and I listened to his interview with you all, and it seemed like he, he was trying to make everybody think that he was a vice president, but all he did was sit at his desk with his feet up and do nothing. Well, nice work if you can get it, but I don't think that's what was happening. Uh, so and, and so the Podesta group is is uh, uh, they ran Hillary Clinton's campaign. So that, that's one thing. Two, uh, I my my other opponents in this in this primary who are veterans, I will I vow I will never ever say a crossword about any of them, no matter what, because I respect their their service. But uh, Riley's people. Uh, the day that I declared, holy smokes, they went out there on Twitter uh, and, and attacked me as a deluded veteran. And he's never worn the uniform. He has no idea what it means to serve for this, to serve this country. So that being said, I'm not sure how far right he is, but I know how far wrong he is. Well, General, this is John again. In all fairness, when one is a lobbyist, one does not necessarily – carry be believe in all of the causes of of their clients right any more than uh it seems to me 
to push too hard on being part of the Podesta group, which is a way to make money, and the way you make money is to is to forward the interests of the clients. It's a little like mm-hmm. holding holding uh, a defense attorney accountable no, for no. for defending a guilty guy, isn't it? Uh, okay, well, so uh, I, I got I have to give I have to concede to your point there, uh, uh, but that, uh, but then again. Uh, Riley was actually trying to give everybody the impression that he really didn't do anything there, and uh, that's not true. And so, if if he had come out and said, "Hey, yes, I was just res- I was just representing my client," then we could say, "Okay, I I uh, I, I got to give you that," but he didn't do that. Okay, that's fair. On the platforms, how do you uh, agree or disagree with uh, with Riley? Well, okay, so uh, both of us. Uh, think that I, I'm, I, I hope he thinks that. I, I, my my platform is get tough on crime, defend gun rights, stop the indoctrination that's happening in our schools. Holy smokes, that's a big one. Uh, build the wall because we see it works, and I've seen it work. Uh, uh, strengthen national security. I don't know if Riley uh, has the the uh, hopefully. God forbid he wins and I don't win, but hopefully his team will be able to brief him enough to do well on representing our national security. But I don't think that's the case. I, I'm better on that. And, and of course, stopping drugs and fentanyl. And so, uh, but but I can build coalitions because here's another thing. There are certain folks, I rem, I'm old enough to remember back in D.C., back at old Ebbets Grill out there, uh, you'd go and you'd see Democrats and Republicans drinking together and laughing. That doesn't happen anymore. But now, in order to get things across the line, we have to actually reach across the aisle sometimes. All right? As a matter of fact, just now, the, the House just passed this tax bill, a bipartisan tax bill. And, uh, I, I was happy, and I was, but I was surprised. I said, "Holy smokes, it's actually happening!" But and so, so that's what I believe. I am, I am far to the right, but I, I, I draw the line when people say, "Don't talk to the other side." You know, we can't get things done if we don't do that. The border bill. I hear two arguments on this. One is that Donald Trump does not want this bill to go through because it would take away something that he uses as a very effective campaign tool. Uh, Others say that, no, it's just a bad bill, regardless of whether or not Trump supported it. I I think it's a bad bill, and we should not uh, approve it. It's seen a a bit of bipartisan success, though, in terms of it being supported. And uh, while Republicans are accusing Joe Biden of doing nothing uh, and of trying to impeach uh, cabinet secretary for doing nothing about border security. Right now, it appears they are trying to do something about border security, and it's being obstructed by Republicans. Where are you on this border well, bill, General? And in, do do you buy that the Republicans are just trying to get Donald Trump something to talk about in the election? Okay, so part of this, part of the border bill, uh, and, the, and the, what part of the Democrats want is 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 just butting up against amnesty for all of the folks who who cut the line and and and, and came uh, came here illegally and so i can't abide by that i'm sorry uh, uh, because my parents came to this country the right way and did it legally and 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 so uh, many of my other family who came up from jamaica all right that that one two you you all have probably seen the stories up in New York where these migrants are, are, are trying to beat cops to death, and, and they're getting away with it. And and uh, when they're getting carted off to court, they're flipping off the cameras. Again, this is not the way to do things. First, we have to secure the border, and then we talk to people about how they can come into the United States. We don't say, rust the border, and anybody who gets past this, uh, by, by the time, uh, by this date, okay, then we're going to make you citizens. That's ludicrous. And so, uh, again, I, I, I'm, I'm for stopping this bill and making it just a secure the border bill, and let's talk about Ukraine and everything else separately. We have a minute left, and that minute is yours, General. Oh, I, I, I'll let you know that on uh, Monday, uh, any veterans who are on this call, please come out to the Clarksburg VFW on Monday at noon because I'm going to be addressing a, a lot of veterans there. 
And uh, I, I hope to see you there. And please visit www.chriswalkerforcongress.com. When, Thank is, you when is the next time you're in the Eastern Panhandle to do an event? Oh, uh, uh, so I'll be up, I'll, I'll be in Martinsburg all next week uh, 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 trying to uh, do some chores at the apartment and but um, and making calls. But event-wise, I will de- uh, – I will be at the Tough Man contest in, in, that's happening in Charleston in March, so that's for sure. But event-wise, I, I, I'll have to get with my people to see what else is happening. Very good. Thank you, General. We appreciate your time this morning. I appreciate your time. Farewell. Thank you, General. Take care. General Chris uh, Mookie Walker, candidate for Congress, and that is a seat that Alex Mooney currently holds, but 